Hey guys, welcome to another Flutter tutorial. My name is Tensor. Today we're going to be building a countdown timer style application. This application will make use of the animation stuff that we've already looked at and some of the custom painter ideas that exist in Flutter. Overall, it will increase the complexity of these ideas that we've sort of already looked at and add a few new ones as well. If you take a look at the code already, I've added a few things in here just to get us started. This is just mainly the boilerplate that we've gone over so many times, creating a stateful widget, and then of course creating the class that has the state for this stateful widget in it. For our main function, I've just extended this with a material app so that we don't have to create another class that will be the root of this application. Because we are going to be dealing with mathematics inside of this application, we do want to import Dart Math, and I'm going to alias it as Math. And also because this class is going to be dealing with an animation controller, we want to add the ticker provider state mix into it. So before we get into building out the actual widget, we want to start with our custom painter. And I'm just going to call this timer painter. We'll have a constructor for our timer painter, which will have an animation, which will be an animation with a double in it. And then we'll have two colors, one called background color and the other one called color. And then for our super constructor, we can pass our animation in for repaint. We want to override our paint function. For this application, we're going to be painting a rather large circle, and then we're going to be painting a arc that goes around the circle and sort of fills it in with a different color. This color just fills in the circle, and then when the circle gets fully filled in, that's when the timer is completed. We'll start by creating a variable called paint, which will be type paint. We can use the cascade operator to add properties to this paint variable. So for instance, we want to add the background color for its color. Then we want to set the stroke width to 5.0. Then we want to add a property called stroke cap. This has to do with what the strokes will look like. And in this case, we want them to be rounded. And then the style will be painting style stroke. This basically means that as it's painting the shape, it will just apply the strokes to the edge. That's exactly the type of behavior that we want. Then we can call canvas draw circle. This takes in an offset, which is our C. Then it takes in our radius and our painter. And to set up this function, we can just pass in size.center and then pass in the zero offset. And then for our radius, we can take size.width and divide it by two, and then we can just pass in paint as our painter. And this will then draw out a circle for us, which will be the circle that just kind of sits there and doesn't change as our animation paints over it. Now, because we want our background circle to be one color and then our filled in circle to be another color, we can then change the color property of our paint to the next color. So first we set it to background color and now we're setting it to color. Then we can get out a value called progress. We'll take 1.0, we'll subtract our animation value from it, and then we'll multiply this entire thing by two and then multiply all of that by math.py. And this will convert the progress into radians. Now we can take our progress and we can draw an arc. And this arc will be the painting that happens as the circle gets filled in. First we'll put in the offset of zero and then we can use an and sign and then put in size. And this will form a rectangle. Then we can have our starting angle be math.pi times 1.5. Then our sweep angle will be a negative version of our progress variable. And then because we want this to just paint on the outside of our circle, we can put false in for the use circle argument. And then of course we just put in our paint variable for the paint argument. That's it for the paint function. Now we want to create the should repaint function. For the custom painter here, we can pass in our timer painter rather than custom painter. And I'm just gonna remove the delegate part so it'll just be called old. This function goes around and it checks to see if it needs to repaint the object. And we'll check to see if the animation value is not equal to the old animation value, or we'll check to see if our color value is not equal to our old color value. And we can run another or check on our background color. So if the background color changes, then it will repaint the object. Okay, so that's it for our custom painter. This is all set up to paint us a nice circle and then paint another circle over top of it based on the duration of our animation. 
Now let's actually build out the layout. Now, of course, inside of our My App State class, we want to have an animation controller. Now we want to create a function that will take and it will convert the time remaining that we have into a certain format so that we can put this in the middle of our circle. And the format that we want is for it to be minutes, then seconds. And we want seconds to have two places and we want minutes to have only one place. We can get a duration by taking our controller duration and multiplying it by the current controller value. And then we can return as a string our duration in minutes and then a colon with our duration in seconds mod 60. And then we also want to call this pad left method on this entire thing as well. And this will make it so that even if we have a single digit number for our seconds, so say it's like five seconds remaining, it will have a zero in front of it. Pad left the second place and we want to put in a zero. All right, so now let's set up our controller with our init state function. We just instantiate a new animation controller. We want to give it vsync and then the duration we can set up and I'm going to give it a default duration of 20 seconds seconds for now. Okay, so now let's build out the layout of our widget. We want to start with a scaffold and then our scaffold inside of it will have a padding and for the padding of this padding we'll have edge insets all 8.0. Then we want to have a column inside of this and then inside of our column for the two children we want to have an expanded and then an aligned, which I don't believe we have talked about. The align widget requires an alignment property to be filled out. We'll put an align inside of the expanded as well. And the alignment for this will be fractional offset center so that we can center our widget in the center of the screen. Inside of our align, we want to have an aspect ratio. And this is again like the align and like the padding. It focuses on one property, which is the aspect ratio. We'll make our aspect ratio 1.0. And then inside of the aspect ratio, we'll have our stack. Inside of this, we'll use what's called a position fill. And this is a position that fills in the entire stack unless we specify the top left or right. So it sets all of them to zero by default. We'll give it an animated builder so that we can build out our animation. We'll pass in for animation, the controller. And then for builder, we need to pass in our build context and the widget. So it's a function, it takes in the build context and the widget, and then we return our custom paint. And for our custom paint widget, we'll set our painter up as our timer painter. For our timer painter, we need to set up the animation. So we put in our controller, we need to set up the background color and then the color. So our background color, I'm gonna make it white and then we'll have our color be pink. We can now compile this application and take a look at it in our emulator. We have this white background and then we have this pink circle. We have no animation yet because we haven't set it up properly yet. But I think now is a good time to start adding in the theme for this particular application. So let's go up to our main function and inside of the material app widget, we'll add the theme property. Inside of our theme data, we want to set up our canvas color, our icon theme, our accent color, and then the brightness. Now the canvas color is the color of the canvas itself. Our canvas is essentially the entire screen. This is our quote unquote background color. So we'll have it be blue gray. Our icon theme takes in what's called an icon theme data widget. And in here we can specify things like the color and some other things like the opacity and the size of the icons throughout the entire application. We want all of our icons to be white because they're going to be on a blue gray background. And in fact, if I reload the application, you can see here's the new blue gray background and then we've got our pink circle. So then we'll put in the accent color and we'll make this colors pink accent and then we'll add the brightness, which we'll set to default of brightness dark. And this sets up the contrast of the different colors and stuff. If we come down here, we can now remove this hard colored colors pink and we can then grab our colors from our theme data. We can create a simple variable called theme data and we can set it equal to theme of and then pass in our context. And this will get the actual colors from our material app widget. And then down inside of the color where we had our pink color, we can now say theme data and then we can get what's called the indicator color. And you'll notice that the pink is now a bit lighter because it got that accent pink that we put in. All right, so now let's set up our align and I'm gonna actually close the screen because this is getting too crowded. 
We want to center this alignment as well, so we'll use the fractional offset center. And then inside of the line, we'll put in a column. Inside of the column, we want to have a few children. And the stuff inside of this column will actually be inside of our circle. So we have this text. It says countdown. That will be the name of the application. And then the style for the text will be our theme data dot text theme dot subhead. And the subhead is sort of a piece of theme that's built into the Flutter application. If we reload the application, you can see here countdown appears at the bottom. And actually the reason why this alignment is not aligning properly is because it's not in the right place. This is supposed to be inside of our stack, not inside of our column. So we put it after our positioned fill. And now if we look at our application, it is now inside of our circle. I also added a few things to it. So after our text, we have this animated builder. We set up our animation. We put in the controller and then we have a new builder, which takes in the build context and the widget. And then we're going to return a text item. This takes in the timer string, which is the function that we made up above. And then we want to set up the style for this to be theme data text theme display for, which makes our font size 112 pixels. We have the countdown right here, and then we have zero colon zero zero. Now, the other thing that we want inside of our column is going to be a container rather than an align. This container will have the button that the user can push to activate the animation. We'll give this with a margin with edge insets all 8.0. And then we'll have a child of a row. We want this to be a row so that we can have access to the main axis alignment. And we want to set that to space evenly. And this is pretty handy because if we wanted to add more icons later, more buttons later, we could. Inside of the children, we'll create what's called a floating action button or a fab and we'll create another animated builder inside of our fab. And naturally this takes in our function that takes in the build context and the widget. And we want to return a new icon and we want to check to see if our controller is animating. If that comes back as true, then we want the button icon to be icons.pause. So it'll be like a pause button. Otherwise we want it to be icon.play arrow. And if we open this up, you can see here, we now have our button down here and it's a play button. If we click on it, nothing happens because we don't have an on pressed function yet. We can set that up after our animated builder. And we want to check to see if our controller is animating again. If it is, we want to call controller.stop. Otherwise, we want to call controller.reverse. And we're going to pass in a value for from. So this will reverse from a specific value. And what we'll do is we'll use the ternary operator to determine where our controller value is. If it's equal to 0.0, .0 then we want to pass back 1.0. Otherwise, we want the controller value to start from that controller value. And if we push the button, you can see it starts and it animates and it counts down from 20 and it will go all the way down to zero and the circle will be colored in slowly but surely. And we can hit the pause button to stop it and it stops at its place. And if we click it again, it will go again and it will go until it finishes, in which case this button will then change back to a play button. Now let's fiddle around with the duration so that you can see how this properly works with minutes and stuff like that. So we can make our duration into something like 240 seconds, which would be four minutes. If we hit play, you can see it starts all the way from four minutes and the leading digit is the minute, whereas the last two are the counting down seconds. Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, feel free to like and subscribe. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them in the box below. And if you just like the video, then by all means, download it as much as you like. Have a good night.